Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. So in this video, we will see how we can use ViewPager in Jetpack Compose. As ViewPager can be of two type, either it will be horizontally scrollable or vertical scrollable. So below are the topics which we will cover in this video. First one will be how we can create a horizontal view pager, and second one will be how we can create a vertical view pager. Now next point will be how we can move to a specific position. Let's say currently we are at the first position, and we want to navigate to the third or fourth position. Next one is listen to the page change. So let's say currently you are on the first page, and user do a swipe, and page got changed, and we want to perform some action on those page changes. So we will see how we can add a page change listener. Then next one is how we can partially show other views. If you see this image, second image is fully visible, while first and this third image is partially visible. So we will see how we can partially show other views. Next one is display indicators. So indicators are basically indicates how many number of pages are there, and the selected page will be highlighted with the darker color in compared to the other pages. And last one is change snap distance. So by default, we have pages snap to the one page. Let's say we want to increase the snap size, so we will see how we can increase the snap size. Now we will just navigate to the code and expand this main. Uh, go to Java in UI, go to screen, and here we will create new file and call it view pager. Now here we will create two composer functions. Next one will be vertical. Now we will create a preview block for these two functions. Just change its name to preview. We just need to rename one. We we'll just call it preview. Horizontal page screen, and from here we will call this function, and this function will be called from this one. Okay, now to create a horizontal pager, we need to use a horizontal pager class. Now, if you see here, we need to define a state. So there is a default state available. So we will use the same. So here we need to define how many number of pages will be there. So we will say 10, and we will pass this state to this function. So it is saying this is an experimental API. So we need to add experimental annotation. So now here we need to create our content. We'll add row, and here we will define text. Now in the text we can say Page, then we can print pager state dot current page. We can remove this part, and we have this thing. We can just see how it looks. Okay. Now, if you see here, we are able to see this content. Now, what we will do? We will just increase the size. So, in this horizontal pager, we will add a modifier. We say maximum. Size. Okay, now you can see our pager size got increase. Maybe we can add a background color also. Now for this text, we can align it to center. We will use horizontal arrangement, and you will say arrangement dot center. Next, we need to use vertical alignment. And it will be alignment dot. Now here, what we need to do instead of adding this modifier to the pager, we can move this modifier to this particular row. We'll say here modifier. Now you can see this particular text for center line. Now we can just see this on device. We we'll just go to this preview block and run this particular code. And now you can see we are in the page zero. Now if I scroll, the page one, page two, page three, 
page 4, page 5, page 6, page 7, page 8, page 9. Okay. Now we are able to create the page. Now next thing is how we can move to a specific position. So what we will do, we will create one more content here. We will say column. Now we will create two buttons, previous and next. So clicking on previous button, it will scroll page to the left hand side. Clicking on the right, it will scroll page to the right hand side. Okay. So we will keep two buttons here. Button. Now here we will add a text. Previous. I'll just add one more button. And here we call it next. So on click of this button, we need to change a page to the previous one. So what we will do, we just state dot scroll to page. And here we need to define pager state dot current page minus one. So this is a suspend function. So we need to create a quote in a scope. Say well scope is equal to remember protein scope now we need to create a launch for this one launch and move this suspend code to the launch block so if you notice here there will be a issue let's say currently we are at the zero page and if we do a current page minus one it will give us a minus one which is an illegal state so we need to update this condition so here we will create one variable where current page is equal to pager state dot current page if current page is greater than zero only then we need to reduce to the page size and we will update this one same way we will just copy this code and move it to here so here we need to update the condition the current page should be less than 10 because we have a total page size of 10 and index start from 0 so 0 to 9 only we are able to scroll so we will update this to current page plus plus we just format this code now we can just see this on device okay now currently we are at page 0 now if i go to click on the previous nothing will happen now if i click on next now you can see we are at the page one now if i again click on this one we are on the page two we cannot go more than nine page now again we go to the previous and it will reduce the page now next thing is we need to listen to a page change so now for page change what we need to do uh, we need to create a side effect here because if you see we are currently in this particular composable function and this composable function can trigger at any time so we need to use launch effect here now the key for this launch effect will be pager state so whenever this pager state got changed we need to execute this particular block of code okay if you have used view pager in view base approach so you know whenever we change the page we get the current page position okay so something similar we have in compose so we need to use one more side effect called snapshot flow a snapshot flow take the current value and calculate the difference on it and it will give the changed value okay so we can just use it let's say snapshot flow now what we need to do we need to use pager state dot current page okay now whenever this current page got changed we will get a new value inside this particular block we will do collect and here if you notice we receive a new value so this will be a change position okay let's say we want to display this particular value what we need to do we will again go to this block and here what we will do we will just create one text block current page is create one more state and we call mutable int state of default value will be zero and we will say it here dollar current page and what we will do current page is equal to it 
so here we are changing the value we need to make it where type so we need to use by remember here so what does by remember does we don't need to explicitly call get or set value we can directly assign a value okay we are getting some warning because we are using current page here and we are having a state as well so maybe you can just rename this one Now we can just run this on device. Now you can see current page is zero. Now what we will do, I will just scroll this one. So now you can see current page is one. If I click on next one, now you can see current page is two. And similar way we can see current page is two. So this way we can perform action whenever the page got changed. Next we will see how we can change the page size and we will add a spacing to a particular page. So we need to scroll to this horizontal pager. Here we have page size, page size. And again in the page size, we can define, let's say we have fixed and we assign a value of 300 dp. And we can add a spacing also, page. And we can just verify this on device. So we need to reduce this size a little bit and say 200 C. Okay, now you can see we are able to see the first page and then we are able to see the second page. So we can also do it dynamically. So if you see here, we are currently passing a hard coded value. So instead of doing this part, what we can do, we can calculate the screen width and we can add some offset value. So by which we can partially display the first content and second content. So if you notice here, we have given a page spacing of 20 dp, but that spacing is not visible. So what we will do, we will just remove a color from pager and move it to row. Now you can see we have proper spacing between the pages. Now next point is displaying of indicators. Indicator is again, which will appear above this pager. So what we can do here, we have column. So we can wrap this pager inside a, a box. So box is same as a frame layout. So this will be the horizontal pager. And here we need to create a indicator. So to create an indicator, first we need to know total number of pages. So if you see here, we have a total number of pages of 10, okay and each indicator should appear in a horizontal line. So we need to wrap those indicator into a row. So here we need to iterate 10 times. So we will use repeat 10. And here we need to create an indicator. So to create an indicator, we can use any container. We will use box. So we will use modifier, modifier, so we will give a padding between each indicators. We will use padding. And we will give a padding of 5 dp. Then next, we need to create those indicator as a circular shape. We will use clip. And here it will be circle shape. Then we need to give a background color. So to create a background color, what we need to do? We need to add a condition here. Let's say, well, color is equal to if pager state dot current is equal to this index then we need to use a darker color color dot black otherwise color dot gray and here we will use background as a color and we need to give a size to this particular box so we will use size and give a size of 18 dp now we just format this code now we can just verify this on device okay now we can see these indicators now when i scroll the page so here we are adding padding so what we will do we will just remove this page size logic for now Okay, now we are in the first page. Skip page got changed, indicator got changed. 
so this way we can create an indicator now next thing is partially show other views so we can use content padding so which will add a padding from the top and end so we will see content padding is equal to padding value and here we can give a padding of 50 dp and from here you can see this way we can add a padding between the contents okay and the last part is change snap distance so if you see here whenever we try to scroll it will only snap to a one page at a time okay now if you see page zero page one page two page three page four now we need to change a snap distance so what we will do we will again go to horizontal pager and here we need to use fling behavior so we can get a default fling behavior from pager defaults and here we need to define the state the pager state now next we need to define snap and here we need to use pager snap distance and at most we can define a four page snap now we can just verify okay now if you see here if i change the page i directly go to the fourth page now next page is nine similar way six two so this way we can change the pager snap distance okay now to create a vertical page what we need to do we just copy this code and paste it to vertical pager Now again, we need to add experimental rotation. And here, instead of horizontal pager, we need to use vertical pager. And now we can just verify this vertical pager. Okay. Now, previously we are scrolling in a horizontal way. Now we will scroll a vertical way. So this way we can create a horizontal or vertical pager. So that much for this video. Hope you have liked it. In the next video, we will see how we can use constraint layout in Jetpack Compose. So stay tuned for further updates.